Hey there! I'm Sarah A. Chrisman, the author of The Tales of Chetsamoka, and today I'm going to tell you about Florence Nightingale's pet owl, Athena, and how she inspired Ethel's pet owl in my book, Three Women a Wheel. Last week, I did a video about Florence Nightingale's tremendous influence on the nursing world, and how the new nurses trained in schools like the one Nightingale founded inspired the character of Nurse McCoy in my Tales of Chetsamoka historical fiction series. Today we're going to revisit Nightingale, and I'll tell you how a lesser-known story from her life helped inspire part of the plot in Book 6 of my Tales of Chetsamoka series, Three Women a Wheel. In the summer of 1850, several years before Nightingale left for the Crimea and worked as a battlefield nurse, she visited the Parthenon while on vacation in Greece. The Grand Temple to Athena, where the ancient Greeks worshipped the goddess of craft and wisdom, had suffered greatly through centuries of conflict, neglect, and vandalism. In the mid-19th century, a major project was underway to repair and restore the ancient monument, and when Nightingale visited in 1850, she was given a tour by the project's curator and his wife. While her hosts were showing Miss Nightingale their work, the group came across a gang of street urchins tormenting a helpless little ball of fluff. It was a baby owl, and Nightingale's tender heart went out to the little creature when she saw the children abusing it. For the quickest resolution of the situation with the least conflict, Nightingale told the children she wanted to buy the baby owl, and they sold it to her for the equivalent of one farthing. Nightingale was scheduled to leave Greece shortly after that, and she took the little owlet with her as she continued her tour of Europe. In Greek mythology, the goddess Athena is often called Owl-Eyed Athena, and she's frequently accompanied by a totemic owl who reveals unseen truths to her. The Victorian teacher Mary Young wrote, The old Greeks did not tie a fillet over the eyes of their goddess of justice that she might not use them even in the light. They gave her the eyes of an owl to see through the darkness. Athena is so closely associated with owls, the little owls found in Greece have the Latin name Athena Noctua. Translated to English, it literally means Athena's owl. Given all this, it wasn't hard for Nightingale to choose a name for the little owl she'd found in the Parthenon. She called her Athena, of course. She fed her little bits of meat by hand and taught her to sleep in her lap like a cat. When Florence returned to England, she brought Athena with her, and the little owl had the run of the Nightingale family home. She even assisted Florence in her nursing tasks by providing a needed a distraction to a little girl who'd been badly burned, and by acting as company to a lonely old blind woman. Admittedly, Athena the owl wasn't always as altruistic as her mistress, and the little owl was a bit of a thief. She liked shiny things and furry things, which she would steal and hide behind books in the family library. She even carried off an elaborate chatelaine ten times her own weight, much to her family's amusement. Athena the Owl had a great dislike for hats and for birds bigger than herself, but she loved books and warm fires and would spend hours playing amongst the books in the family library. Florence used to carry Athena around in her pocket, and when the ferry boatman Charon finally escorted the little bird to the great aviary on the other side of the river Lethe, Florence Nightingale broke down and wept. Her sister recalled Nightingale's simple eulogy for her pet. Poor little beastie. It was odd how much I loved you. Athena's mortal remains were preserved by an expert taxidermist and can now be seen at the Florence Nightingale Museum. Florence's sister, Parthenope, wrote a book about the remarkable bird, titled Life and Death of Athena, an Owlet from the Parthenon. All the information I've just been telling you about Athena's life is material I learned from Parthenope's book. I'm a big fan of Greek mythology in general, and of Athena in particular. Because of Athena's connection to the owls that bear her name, I've got a real soft spot for all owls in general. For my birthday this year, I had Gabriel build me an owl house in the hopes that a family of sawets might move into the tree in our backyard. We haven't had any tenants yet, but 
you know, the real estate market, it takes a while. We're still hoping. I learned about Florence Nightingale's pet owl a number of years ago, and reading about her made me really want to write a pet owl into my series. It took a while to work out the right plot for her, though. I think I first envisioned a pet owl as a character way back when I was writing book two of my series, but I honestly couldn't picture cantankerous Nurse McCoy cohabitating with an owl in her house. For that, we had to wait for our sweet and lovable lady scientist, Awkward Ethel, to appear in book six, Three Women a Wheel. The tales of Chetsumoka take place in the Pacific Northwest, and it took a bit of research and creativity to translate Athena the Owl's story to North America. We don't have Athena Noctua's here, but we do have Salwet Owls, sweet little cuties that have a wingspan of under six inches. Though they may be little, they are fierce, and they can kill prey up to four times their own weight, including Norway rats and pigeons. Besides the book by uh, Florence Nightingale's sister, Prothenope, in the course of reading up on what it's like to live with a pet owl, I found some other great books as well. My favorites were The Owl Who Liked Sitting on Caesar and Two Owls at Eaton. I highly recommend them both if you, haven't read them, if you haven't already read them yet. They're great. I also owe a big thanks to falconry expert Elke Emmerman, who was immensely helpful in sharing her personal experiences with owl ownership in Belgium, and to the good folks in my no local neighborhood who fly raptors and give educational presentations about them. By the way, this is me at a fundraiser for a wildlife shelter, meeting yet another owl, also named Athena. Barred owls eat songbirds, and she seriously thought my hat had her lunch on it. Before I leave you today, I'd like to point out one of the most special antiques in my den. This is my own Athena, and she's the same species of little owl as Florence Nightingale's Athena. She was stuffed long, long before I was ever born, and... I like thinking about all the things she might have seen over the years, and I like having my own totemic owl to watch over me while I write. I think she helps me write, and just as Athena's owl revealed unseen truths to her, I think that she reveals unseen stories to me. Thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a nice thumbs up. and. Remember to tell your friends about my books. Happy reading.